During one summer, Grandfather Arthur meandered through the forest, and suddenly, beneath a bush, he spotted a sight that arrested his attention. A wolf cub nestled in a ball, still in the tender stages of puppyhood. As Arthur approached, the young one showed no inclination to flee. Instead, it remained motionless, thin and gaunt, its skeletal frame betraying its malnourished state. What had befallen this creature? And why did it not attempt to escape? These questions occupied Grandfather Arthur's thoughts as he drew closer to the wolf cub, which made futile attempts to flee, hindered by a broken paw. Arthur's heart went out to the wolf cub, crippled and abandoned by its mother, it had faced a cruel fate. Determined to help, he gently captured the cub, placing it in a bag and transporting it home. There, he carefully examined its injured paw, confirming a fracture. With tenderness, he immobilized the limb and provided nourishment. Understanding that despite the pain, the cub endured, sensing Arthur's goodwill. Over the following four weeks, under Arthur's care, the cub's paw healed, and it thrived on a diet of wholesome food, growing robust and strong. Grandfather Arthur believed that there was no other well-fed wolf cub like it. Nobody had seen, but the trace still remained. It had a slight limp on its front paw. The wolf cub began to run around the yard, and all you had to do was call out its name, which Grandfather Arthur gave it, Gray, and it immediately rushed to its savior. It ate from his hands, accompanied him in the forest like a dog, and obediently returned home. Gray had become completely tame, and then the wolf cub made friends with the neighbor's boy, Alyosha. They were both still small, so interests and games they had in common. So the whole wolf cub lived with Midia for a year, and Alyosha every day brought his friend various treats. But then one day Gray disappeared. Grandfather Arthur could not find him anywhere. Arthur searched for him for so long. His wild nature must have spoken in him, and he went to where the wolf is supposed to live, into the forest spaces, attacking roe deer, hares, and other animals. Alyosha cried for a long time for his friend. Arthur calmed the boy down and said that when he grew up a little, he would bring him a shepherd puppy from the city. Two years passed, and Arthur had completely forgotten about his gray friend. He lived a quiet life in the village, and suddenly one day, a tearful Maria, Alyosha's mother, came running. In the morning, he went for a walk and disappeared. Maybe he went to the forest to pick berries and got lost. Maria ran to gather people to search for her son, and Grandfather Arthur collected his hunting equipment and went into the forest to look for Alyosha. The boy had nowhere to get lost except the forest. After four hours of searching, Arthur suddenly heard someone running from the thicket. It rushed as fast as it could, breaking branches noisily. It was already very close. Arthur took off his gun and cocked the hammer and prepared to shoot. Suddenly, he saw a wolf galloping towards him in big leaps. Here it was, huge, gray, with raised fur. It noticed Midia. It froze for a moment on the path, and its eyes flashed angrily. Arthur had already taken aim, but when the wolf made another jump, he noticed that the wolf was limping on its front paw. Then it flashed in his head, gray. And with his gun aimed, Arthur called out, gray. After a few more jumps, the wolf stopped and turned its head. It looked at Midia for a long time, then spun around again, getting ready to run further, but it only took a few slow steps and stopped, turning to him again. The wolf recognized Arthur. It really was Gray, the one who two years ago, as if manually, lived in his yard. The wolf howled and went into the thicket of the forest, looking around as if calling Midia along. What does he want? Where is he calling me? Thoughts spun in the old man's head. Having walked a hundred paces, he saw Alyosha sleeping in the bushes, and next to him lay Gray. So this is where you called me, native, cried out joyfully Grandfather Arthur. You are protecting Alyosha here, your friend. And when Arthur wanted to touch up to him and pet him, the wolf pulled away and whined quietly, like a crying puppy. Still, fear lived in him, because Arthur was a man, the most fearsome enemy of the wolf race. The wolf had already lost the habit of Arthur over these two years, but Alyosha remembered and guarded him in the forest. Arthur took the boy in his arms and turning to the wolf, said, Thank you, Gray, for saving Alyosha. Go your way, he said. Arthur walked towards the house, but Gray did not leave and followed Arthur, limping slightly and whined as if he wanted to say something. So they reached the edge from which the field began. Here the wolf stopped, and while Arthur and Alyosha moved away, it watched them for a long time 
and then slowly, like reluctantly, he disappeared into the forest. A little later, Arthur heard his howl, lingering, plaintive, definitely a sob. Apparently, the wolf said goodbye forever to his savior Arthur and little friend Alyosha. If you like this story, then please give a thumbs up and share it with your loved ones. Also subscribe and press the bell icon to never miss the update from our channel. Thank you.